I now give the call to the Honourable Member for Longman. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Treasurer. Given that Labor has never delivered a surplus in my lifetime and that in his time as Treasurer, the government has delivered the four largest budget deficits in Australian history, will right. the Treasurer confirm that, based on forecast surpluses, I will be 110 years old before the debt he has created in just four years has been paid off. When there is silence, the Treasurer will be given the call. The Treasurer. I thank the uh, member for his question because, Mr Speaker, what we have here is a very typical example of what comes from the opposition on a daily basis. And what we actually have is the fact that the opposition are constantly talking our economy down, Mr Speaker. They're constantly talking our economy down. And the fact is, Mr Speaker... Order. 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 There is far too much audible conversation and noise uh, in the chamber. The Treasurer will be heard in silence for the balance of this answer, and that um, direction goes to honourable members on both sides. The Treasurer. Yes, Mr Speaker. The opposition is constantly talking our economy down by exaggerating exaggerating the impact of public debt in this country by misrepresenting the budget bottom line repeatedly, Mr Speaker. The fact is, Mr Speaker, the when it comes to our economic fundamentals... Flinders will leave the chamber under the provisions of Standing Order 94A. I have said that the Treasurer will be heard in silence for the balance of his answer. Uh, the member for Flinders was interjecting, and the same rules go to anyone else in the chamber. The Treasurer has the call. Of course, Mr Speaker, when it comes to public debt, our position is the envy of the world, Mr Speaker. When it comes to the level of unemployment in this developed economy, our position is the envy of the world, Mr Speaker. When we look at the investment pipeline, our position is the envy of the world, Mr Speaker. When we look at our experience during the global financial crisis and the global recession, our position is the envy of the world. But, Mr Speaker, because those opposite are now such a shambles when it comes to fiscal policy, with their $70 billion crater in their, bubble, in their budget bottom line, it is incumbent upon them to come in here and misrepresent public finances in this country. Because if they were in power, they would blow a $70 billion hole in our budget bottom line, Mr Speaker. The level of public debt in this country is very, very low by international standards, less than a tenth of major advanced economies, Mr Speaker, less than a tenth. We have been held up as a perfect example of what to do by the International Monetary Fund, by the OECD and by the World Bank. Yet they come into this House day in, day out and talk down our economy, Mr Speaker. They know that our revenues have been written down by $140 billion. And despite all of that, because of the application of our very strict fiscal policy, we are coming back to surplus, Mr Speaker, in 2012-13. And the reason they today laugh like hyenas, Mr Speaker, is that they know that their position is a shambles, a $70 billion crater in their budget bottom line before they make any other commitments to come uh, to the people of Australia before the next election. Mr Speaker, the Leader of the Opposition, the Shadow Treasurer and the Shadow Finance Spokesman simply can't make their numbers add up. A $70 billion hole. And we get to the farcical situation where the Shadow Treasurer has to tell Laurie Oakes that he's going to give a figure to the Shadow Cabinet, and depending on which figure it is, he will know who is the leaker on the opposition front bench, Mr Speaker. Well, I think we now know today, Mr Speaker. He gave Mo over there the $50 billion figure, but it was the Curly over time there he gave the $70 expired. billion figure. The Treasurer's time has expired. The Treasurer's time has expired and he will resume his seat. The